This is a head CT on a four-year-old boy with a headache. The head CT at first glance looks fairly normal. We're looking through it. We're not seeing any signs of hydrocephalus, any mass or anything like that. But as we go down lower, we can see at the level of the frame magnum, there's fullness, there's soft tissue-like material posterior to the brainstem. With modern CT scans, we have the ability to have multiplanar reformats. And this sagittal reformat shows us cerebellar tonsils protrude caudal to the level of the frame and magnum. This can be approximated on CT, but the best characterization for this is on MR. MR, if we zoom in, allows us to see several landmarks. There is the basion, which is the inferior aspect of the clivus, in particular, the basi occiput portion of the clivus. And then we have the opistion. The basion and opistion represent the anterior and posterior margins of the frame and magnum. We can use that to draw a line between the basion and the opistion to approximate the plane of the frame and magnum. And then we can make a measurement perpendicular to that line to see how far caudal to that plane the cerebellar tonsils extend. And here they extend approximately nine and a half millimeters below the plane of the frame and magnum. And that is typically considered to be a Chiari type one malformation. But how do we determine how significant this is? Well, the extent of tonsillar descent is one mechanism. But another tool we have is CSF flow studies. This is a dynamically acquired cardiac gated phase contrast image. This is acquired sagittally at the level of the frame and magnum. We can see the basic anatomic details that we see in the structural image. And as we scroll through the cine, we can see different phases of CSF pulsations. And we can see here the brain stem, the upper cervical cord. And so this is the cervicomedullary junction. And we can see that ventral to the brain stem and cervicomedullary junction, we have patent bidirectional flow of cerebrospinal fluid. We can see it going from dark to bright. So that is showing two different directions of flow. We're also seeing flow posterior to the brainstem at the level of the frame and magnum. So this is a sign that at the time the study is performed, there's not a significant alteration in CSF flow dynamics at the level of the frame and magnum. Now, one of the other things that's a part of a Chiari type one malformation imaging workup is imaging of the cervical spine. And we can see here the cerebellar tonsillar ectopia extending below the plane of the frame and magnum. And what we see of the cervical cord looks normal. We do not see any signs of a fluid collection within, either hydromyelia or syringohydromyelia. So this case is an example of a mild Chiari type 1 malformation without appreciable alteration in CSF flow dynamics and without evidence of syringohydromyelia.